everybody, welcome back to the channel and to Final Fantasy XIV. Alright, so last time we finished up with the uh, Lumsa Lumensa dancing quest and then picked up several crafters and a couple gatherer classes so that we can uh, work on those, uh, mainly so that we can repair our own gear as we go, but also because it's a great way to make some money in game so we're gonna do that but um, in this episode we're going to pick up a couple more side quests and uh, I was going to show you um, if you notice on my name here I've got an extra little tag at the end of my name so I logged on a little bit earlier today to uh, work on leveling those gatherers and crafters that I picked up and I ended up getting them all above level 10. Um, so probably in the next episode I'll go through and do all the quests for that. I don't want to do crafter and gatherer stuff for two episodes in a row. But anyway, um, while I was working on that I ended up getting a... Uh, where somebody had uh, sent me a whisper. Uh, in this game they call them a tell. And uh, they asked me if I was interested in joining their FC, which their tag is weird. And because this person actually talked to me instead of just, you know, sending me a random request, I decided to go ahead and join. Also so that I can go ahead and do the Chocobo uh, quest that we weren't able to pick up in the last episode. Um, this way... I have access to a couple extra things. Um, if you look up here, I'll move my cursor so you can see it. They actually give FC buffs. Um, so this one will help me out with leveling uh, my battle classes such as my uh, Gladiator and if I decide to keep working on Lancer and any future classes that I pick up. So having that will uh, help out just a little bit. I think it gives you an increase of like 10 to 15 percent. It might be a little bit more than that. Um, I'm not sure. I'd have to... Let me see. Um, but anyway, it, it gave me this new um, option here under social. Um, so this is the free company. Um, you can kind of go in and look at a bunch of different things. So heat of the battle, yeah, it's 10 percent. So I was right. And that uh, stays up for 24 hours, so that's a, a pretty nice little buff. And they've also got the A Man's Best Friend buff up here, so that our Chocobo companions also earn uh, a 15% increase in experience when you're uh, playing with them out in the field. Um, they've got a couple other inactive buffs here that they'll cycle through. Um, so yeah, anyway, FCs are really great for that. Um, they also give you access to a couple other things. Um, one, people who will probably help you with stuff. Um, like earlier when I was working on leveling my crafters, the leader of the FC, which, here let me, I'm not sure if it'll let me look at who, hmm. I might have to scroll through here. Um, the leader... I forgot what their name was. I'm... oh. Oh no, it wasn't the leader. It was just somebody who's pretty high up there. Um, they are um, in the this rank, the second one down. So the leader person is in the Surf and Verb rank. I'm not sure who it is, I haven't met them yet. But uh, the person who invited me is in this rank. And they actually noticed that I was working on leveling those crafters, and they crafted me a bunch of gear that I will be able to use. Like, they made this high-level pickaxe, um, they made me a couple, two different hats, and then um, uh, this chess piece for gathering, and a couple other things. Um, so. I, so yeah, uh, they'll help you, and um, then there's also the free company chest. I'm not sure if there's one that I can just run to right here. I know that there is one in the, uh, um, up by the 
yeah, it's like right here. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like when I get next to one. I don't really want to run over there just for this, but um, you can get items out of there uh, depending on what um, permissions they give you when you're a brand new member of an FC. And uh, this one has a Discord that I could join if I want to, and they run um, group things such as they uh, they uh, get a big group together and they all run a map party. Um, they do dungeons together and stuff like that. So it's a it's a good thing to be in a free company. Um, and this one seems like it's fairly large. Uh, when I was looking in here. Um, it looks like there's a, it says 26 people are online right now out of 237. Um, a lot of those are probably inactive um, and they stay offline. Like if you look down here, a lot of these have been offline for like 30 or 40 days or longer. So uh, a lot of people are probably inactive or they were just like, they sub for you know a 30 day uh, time frame and then they stop for a while there's a lot of people who do that in the game but either way uh, I think this will be a good thing and again it lets me do the chocobo quest <laughs> um, so once I grab this and do that and we're gonna also do the one that's over here at the serpents um, we're going to head out to the Bent Branch area to pick up the other Chocobo quest that we weren't able to do before. And then we're going to do the Gold Saucer. And sometime in between all of that, uh, probably right after the Chocobo quest, I'll show you what the FC house looks like. Um, so yeah, that'll be pretty cool. So let's talk to this person. Tio Moe would... Uh, grant you a passage through the White Wolf Gate. Oh, okay, so we just get access to another gate. Uh, Leanne, is it not? I've been following your exploits with great interest. You have served Gridania well, but I believe your greatest accomplishments are yet to come. It is with such lofty expectations that I would grant you passage beyond our White Wolf Gate. Take this pass and show it to... French. I can't say that. I'm not even going to try. Yeah, I'm not going to try. The Gatekeeper. Gr gird yourself well for the battles to come, and I am sure the news of your deeds will reach me again before long. Alright, so this just gets us access to another one of the gates here in Gridania, which will be useful <laughs> in the future. Um, what's the Carpenter? Oh, uh, also, while I was working on leveling the crafters, I think I am going to go ahead and probably just grab everything because um, I, there was a lot more items than I remember uh, where you either gather them with a class that I haven't grabbed yet such as Fisher or you craft them with a class that I haven't grabbed yet like Leather Worker and Carpenter and stuff like that. Like for Goldsmith there were like four um, recipes that needed like uh, lumber, which is what you make out of uh, a, a carpent, you make with a carpenter using botanist uh, gathered items. So <laughs> um, I think I am going to probably go ahead and um, unlock doing the other uh, gatherers and crafters um, and just kind of slowly work towards getting them all to one rank and then in one episode or maybe two episodes I'll do all the quests for each class and that way it's not going to be super often that I do that because um, it's going to take me time to level them to each stage. Anyway, a puck no longer, Twin Adder. I'm pretty sure this is PvP which I might do a couple times for a video but I'm not going to I don't, I've never really spent a whole lot of time doing PvP in this game. Anyway, uh, Vorsail uh, would have you begin your training in earnest. Listen well, Private Lung Tian. The Order of the Twin Adder does not just welcome glory seekers willy-nilly into our ranks. You stand here today because we believe in your potential. We believe that you will go forth as a serpent and help restore order to a world gone mad. And yet, potential alone will not carry you far. 
Indeed, the road to glory is littered with the bodies of would-be heroines who lacked the determination and diligence to hone their innate talents. But you will not suffer the same fate, I am certain of it. It is with such high hopes for your future that I would send you to begin the next phase of your training. The venue shall be the Wolves Den, a proving ground established by the Aorzian Alliance to prepare Grand Company recruits for the battles that lie ahead. The Wolves Den is to be found just off the shores of Lanosia. The ferry at the Morby Dry Docks in Lower Lanosia will grant you passage there. Upon your arrival, seek out Storm Captain Burke. Borkoya. Uh, I have already taken the liberty of submitting a letter of recommendation on your behalf. So we'll get that. Um, and I'm not going to do it this episode, most likely, but we will at some point go and run a little bit of the Wolf's Den. I know that it is a good way to get some experience um, because you can go in even at this low level that I'm at right now. Um, it just, it sinks everybody, um, before you had to wait until you were level 50 at least to do it, but. Hello, French. <laughs> Only those who possess a gate pass may travel through the White Wolf Gate. It is for your own good. The fearsome beast that lurk beyond would tear an unprepared adventurer limb from limb. You have papers? Let us see now. Yes, everything appears to be in order. Go in safety, Lian. In the future, should you wish to pass, you would need you need only say the word. All right, and now we can use the Ethernet to get there. There's a quest just popped up right next to me. Okay. Um. I think that was all here, and then we were going to go to Bent Branch to get that Chocobo quest, then we'll go to the house, and then we were going to go to Old Da to pick up the gold saucer. Branch is Central Shroud, isn't it? Yeah. He's gonna attack that ground squirrel. <laughs> okay, so um I had uh, gold chocobo feathers from a couple friends that I had recruited. Um, a long time ago. They didn't stay subbed very long, so I only have a few feathers, but it was enough to buy this, the drought, amber drought chocobo, and I wanted to see what it looks like, so I'm gonna mount that. Oh, that looks really nice. On my main character, I have, I still haven't spent the gold feathers that I had, um, because I was hoping to save up enough to get the twin tani amount. Um, which if you've not played the game, you wouldn't know what that is, but it's a really cool looking dragon. Um, so I was saving up to get that, but yeah, the, um, I need to get either those two friends who accepted my invite thingy to continue subbing for a while, or I'm going to have to find somebody else I can invite. But, for this character, I went ahead and... Oh, come on, let me get up there. Okay, there we go. <laughs> um, for this character, I decided to go ahead and just get the Amber Drop Chocobo. Um, just to have one more mount that I can use, anyway. But yeah, this one's a double ride Chocobo, just like the other Drop Chocobo is. Or, Draft Chocobo, however you say that. Um, so there is a second seat on this. If you were in a party with me, you would be able to uh, hop on and ride with me. And I think that's super neat. Anyway, we're going to talk to Luke a lot. And we get some cracker roots. The Chocobo Keep Luke a lot uh, may be far, mo far from home, but has some matters close to his heart that he would discuss with you. 
Greetings, greetings, madame. Tell me, how goes the training for your avian mount? I could not help but notice that there are some bias towards real-life combat. All battle and no bonding makes for a less noble bird. I see that you already have a fine residence of your own. Why not build a stable for your chocobo? Closeness tent leads to fondness, and there are other perks. Indeed, I could tell you of those and more if you wish. We of Ishgard have a knack for chocobo husbandry. We have forgotten more than Gudania will ever know, I fear. One Ishgardian knack is to stable chocobos at one's residence. That makes it possible to train and feed the birds. The second knack is to keep the stable meticulously clean and picked up. Chocobos are clean, cleanly creatures and easily distressed by slovenly housekeeping. Shall we get straight to it? Pick up every vegetable scrap littering the stable, if you please. Oh. <laughs> Oh, I got like five of them. Let's see. There's one over here. And then this one. Have you collected all the vegetable scraps? Very good, I will take those. The, the place is as fresh as cream. How will how will the chocobos look fluffing their feathers in, in contentment? You would do well to lay in a magic to lay in a magic broom. You should need to use those for a proper cleaning. Or you shall need to. But that is for another time. There is more to stable care than simple cleaning. And that brings us to the thirdish guardian neck. Fresh feed. I am not the aptest tutor for this craft, however. There is one that has the knack right here in Bent Branch. That would be Mistress Margot, uh, the resident botanist. She is in charge of all cultivars maintained here for the chocobos. Go go to her and beg a few greens and information from her. She will not stint you on either. Some feed for your chocobo? Aye, you've come to the right place for it. It has been a warm spring. Try the cracker root. Many birds who will other who would otherwise go off their feed cannot resist these luscious roots. We raise them with love as well as skill. Master Lucalot likes to call that a knack, but I've no quarrel with it. Tis a joy to grow, whether it be vegetables, chocobos, or the skill in one's hands. Why not try your own hand at growing vegetables? You say you have a house. A house must have a field. Food grown with your love and care, how could your bird not thrive eating feed such as that? Maybe, mayhap we are not, we, we are not what we eat. Elsewhere my fa- bleh. Elsewise my father would be a codfish or swim in butter. <laughs> but the feed certainly makes chocobo's eye. So sensitive is their nature that you could see the effect of particular feed as clear as day. But I have yet to tell you about the main feeds. You are sure to be fascinated. Shall we ever tire of speaking of the gissel greens, precious, luscious plants? You can summon and train your birds with these greens, but as well wonderful as gissel greens are, they are hardly unique in being attuned to specific areas of the chocobo's abilities. The art of raising a chocobo involves choosing a balance of these vegetables to feed your bird, thus creating a chocobo that is, well, just so. The best laid plans of wranglers are often frustrated by a picky eater, though. Do make sure you come to know each bird's likes and dislikes. There are no they are no pieces of magitech to bend to your will, but when bird and woman grow together, why, you might discover something very special indeed. Aye, and you would do well to grow your own feed. May as, may as well fight with a pine sword to raise a chocobo without a vegetable field of your own. Visit a store to buy the seeds, and remember, love and skill, there's, no, there's the knack. I do go on, don't I? You came for a handful of feed and got an earful, but that's the way of it with us botanists. Take this fine specimen of a cracker root to your sweet chocobo, and I wish you both the joy of it. Okie dokie. Let's go talk to Luke a lot again. Hi, were you able to collect some chocobo feed? Margo Margo Margold is never stingy with her vegetables. As fine a cracker root as ever I have seen. A magnificent specimen. This will make the training all the more effective, I believe. We come to the fourth knack of Chocobo husbandry, Leanne. Training. Hmm. I hear head wrangler Keitha about her work. 
Uh, there's a thought. Go and speak with her. She will tell you much and more of training chocobos. Nice to see you, Venture. Here to learn about training your bird, you say? Stay with your chocobo and you'll be able to train the sweetheart. But you need to give him a treat straight after and not a moment later. What I do is what I do is to go pick up a choice bit of feed before I get the bird done and trained in into training. Uh, the results vary, as that slick ruffian at the ebony stalls used to say. Around here, results depend on how clean the stables are, what treat you give. Uh, but as long as you love your chocobo, it's hard to muck it up. Well now, got a fine root, a cracker root on you already. That'll work a treat, no pun intended. Go on, start training little Leah here, there. right after the training. That was sweetly done that was sweetly done, Venturer. You've got some skill at this, I reckon. Some are made to train just that one bird, but you can handle any chocobo. Some venturers share a stable, you know. Might may be you could care for birds other than your own. You muck out the stables, that means you're helping raise up the other adventurers' birds as well as your own. Don't matter who did the mucking out, really. Those birds have been cared for, you see. That ought to hold you for a while, I. No use pouring too much wine into a cup. You'd best return to Luclop before his guardian brain case starts imagining the worst. <laughs> Guess that means he's a worry wart. Sweetly done. High praise indeed from Keitha. Excellent, excellent. I have now taught you all the knacks you must need to know at this you must needs know at this time, I believe. It is my hope that you will add a stable to your residence and there raise a chocobo to serve as your brave mount and trusted companion. How long I meet how I long to meet that bird someday. I trust you will not disappoint me. Alright. So that is done. And we can now stable G at the free company house so when you get added to a free company they automatically will add a teleport um, location to your list here and it shows up underneath the blue um, etherite uh, symbol um, if you want to focus it or under all it should be at the top at all times but uh, so this free company is in the goblet which is the Ulda housing area and we're going to just teleport and because it is a residential area the teleport cost is a lot lower than some of the other areas even if it's kind of far away okay and there's several uh members of the free company standing here um a couple of them have already gotten the brand new mount that they just released and I think it looks super cool. I'm hoping to get it soon, but I, I might wait until it goes on sale. I don't know yet. There's a couple other mounts that I want to get. So this is the front yard of the house. These are the gardens. Um, currently it looks like the Gissel Greens are ready to harvest. I do not think that I yet have the permission to do that. Um, usually they set that for um, a higher ranked person in large free companies like this. Then over here is the chocobo stable, and there's a few chocobos in there already. And you see where the ground is kind of glowy, that means that it's been cleaned. And you can just select the uh, arrow on the side there, and you can either tend to a speci specific chocobo, and this is the entire list of all the chocobos currently stabled um, and their owners. And uh, the ones that have an orange number next to their rank means that they're ready to rank up to the next one. And this chocobo here, he is ranked up completely to rank 20, so he can't level up any higher than that. And if you look to the right there, he's got a 10 next to tank, healer, and DPS. That means he spent all of his uh, skill points for his chocobo. So yeah, that's um, everybody in there. And we're going to stable G. So he can 
experience being in a chocobo stable and then we're going to uh, tend to my chocobo and then you can select train feed change name fetch view, view details which just lets you kind of look at what he's wearing and what his rank is and stuff um, but we're going to train and use the cracker roots that we just got and it puts you in a little cutscene where you can watch them do the training and it's super cute <laughs> and there's his food bowl and as soon as they're done with their training you have to leave them in the stable for an hour uh, where so like if you go in here and look at detail or um, tend to the specified chocobo uh, when you go to find G he's up here at the top uh, over on the right side it says training in 59 minutes so he needs to be in there for an hour before we can take him back out again or train him again um, and we've got five cracker roots so we could feasibly train him five times in five hours I'm probably not gonna be online that long but you never know. Um, anyway, uh, and then once he's done with that, I can show you how much experience he gets. And then you just select that little glowy thing to go inside. And uh, usually houses will play the same music that you were hearing when I was standing outside, unless you buy or craft an orchestrion. And it allows you to play music that you've gathered throughout the game. Um, they come in as music sheets. I've got a couple um, uncrafted ones, like right here, this faded copy of the Dark em Dark's Embrace. If I had that crafted into the actual music sheet, it's a usable item, and it stays with your character throughout, you know, the entirety of its existence and it will show up under um, orchestrian list and uh, wherever the orchestrian is I haven't actually found it yet I'm not sure where it's at here in the house um, you can select what songs you listen to in the house and then everybody can uh, go from there so this right here is the company chest and they have it set to where I can get items out of the fir first chest. So they've got a couple songs here that are pretty common. Um, a bunch of dye. So if I ever decide I want to change what color uh, clothes I've got, it looks like I can kind of come in and grab a couple here and there if I need to. They've got some prisms that we can use. They've got a bunch of Gistle Greens. Um, which I'm probably going to grab a few. Um, and they've got some cracker roots to train the chocobos with. And that's just going to be something that they're going to probably keep access to uh, so everybody can help out and train other, everybody else's chocobos. Um, and then the next couple tabs are all view only. Uh, while I'm still a very brand new member, they, they don't want it to where like, they invite somebody and then they just steal everything. So they've got this this part restricted, um, and they've got the gill one where I can just submit some gill if I wanted to, but I'm really poor still, so I'm not going to do that. Um, right here is an armoire where I can store those, um, those uh, items that I um, receive as... Um, rewards for things uh, there you can't store everything and I'm gonna just store the stuff that I'm probably not gonna wear um, and I can always just pull it right back out as soon as I'm wanting to wear it again so like if I decide I want to use any of these for um, glamour or anything like that I can always just come right back and put it um, pull it out um, use it as a glamour and then put it right back in. I have to repair that before I can put it in there. I'm just putting all this stuff up so I don't have to worry about it taking up 
space in my armory chest for too long. And again, I can always pull it out if I want to. And I can use any armor, armory, armoire, whatever you call it, uh, that I find. So like, if I don't use that one, there's one in the end room, or there's uh, one in a couple of the locations that I can't think of off the top of my head. There's a Moogle here. Oh, he's the Orchestrian. I found it. So yeah, they've got this here, and you can uh, select one and uh, kind of sample what they sound like and stuff. Anyway, I think it's cool. Anyway, so that is the Free Company House. Um, lots of cool things. Very useful to be in one. And then, oh, and this thing right here lets you um, leave a message if you visit somebody's FC house and, or just personal house and you want to tell them that it looks nice or whatever. You can leave a little message, which I think is a neat little um, addition that they added uh, within a, a recent patch in the game. So yeah, pretty neat. The main thing I wanted, though, was the Chocobo Stable, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, having people that can help you out with some stuff is nice, too, though. Um, so, yeah, that's that. And since we're here in Ulda, we can, or in the Goblet, it will be pretty cheap to teleport to Ulda to go grab the Gold Saucer um, quest. And unlock that and run around there for a little bit. So we're going to talk to this well healed youth. A well-heeled youth on Emerald Avenue appears to have been the beneficiary of some good fortune and may not be averse to sharing it. Do be careful with those. Break anything and I shall be first forced to deduct it from your salary. Beg pardon? What is my loyal manservant carrying? Why, a not-so-small fortune and prizes all ably won by yours truly in the gold saucer. You have heard of the gold saucer, nay? Ye gads, woman, you might at least try to keep up with the times. It is only the Sultanate's newest and finest place of entertainment. Thrilled at the slight of majestic birds roaring down the straits of the Chocobo races, pit your wits against your peers at the triple triad tables. At the gold saucer, one can do all this and more, and if you know what you're about, you'll walk out a wealthier woman than you've entered. If there's a better place to shake off one's cares after a grueling day of prom promenading, I've never heard of it. Did I mention the prizes? Ah, but I dare say you'd rather discover them for yourself. Yes, I'll wager you're wondering just how in Thal's good name you can experience the wonders of the gold saucer firsthand. Am I right or am I right? Ha, I thought as much. Well, since this has been my lucky day, I don't see why it shouldn't be yours too. I just happen to have a spare golden airship ticket, you see. Consider it a gift from me to you, my lady. Well, that's generous. Just show that ticket to the fine lady over at the landing, and you'll have a seat on the next airship bound for revelry and riches. Be fairly warned, though. You may expect no mercy from me should our paths cross at the triple triad tables. Nay, not so much as an aunt's. Ha ha. Okay. Um, let me go to airship landing. Inside, they've got a whole bunch of etherites you have to attune to as well, so that's going to be the first thing we do. This is the reception desk for flights bound for the Mandeville Gold Saucer. Before processing, I must ask that you submit your ticket for inspection. Ahem, you do have a ticket, yes? It appears that everything is in order. An airship will be departing shortly before the next bell. Shall I reserve a seat for you? Off we go. <laughs> oh, it's so big. Giant cactuar. It's glowy. Oh my goodness. 
begin this? Why is it out in the middle of the desert, though? You'd think that they would want to put it closer to a city to get more people. <laughs> oh, and uh, now that we've got this unlocked, we've got a new challenge log category for the gold saucer itself. Um, and the more of those you complete, you get more of the currency that you use here. Um, we've got several achievements <laughs> uh, that are accessible here as well, which take a long time. Alright, so we got the airship ticketer here. The attendant at the airship landing seems eager to welcome you to the gold saucer, and we get five tickets that redeem for one free play at any of the Mandeville Gold Saucer mini attractions. So that does not include the Jumbo Cackpot, Mini Cackpot, Chocobo Racing, Triple Triad. Okay. The attendant is eager for us. Welcome, honored guests, to the Mandeville Gold Saucer, while you're wa where your wildest dreams are ever but a card or a Chocobo's beak away from coming true. If this is your first visit, nothing would please us more than to give you a full tour of our establishment that you might enjoy its wonders to the fullest. At the conclusion of the tour, it is our custom to offer our esteemed patrons a complimentary gift straight from the vaults of our illustrious pro proprietor himself. Consider it Lord Mandeville's way of personally thanking you for your patronage. Should you wish to take the tour, pray proceed to the main counter over there and speak with the receptionist. On behalf of the management, may I take this opportunity to thank you for choosing the Gold Saucer. Rest assured, my colleagues and I will spare no effort in seeing that your visit is a pleasant and profitable one. May fortune smile upon you. Welcome, Traveler, to the Gold Saucer. This is the main counter where you can purchase tickets for the mini cackpot, acquire and redeem Mandeville Gold Saucer points, and much, much more. But what in the world are Mandeville Gold Saucer points, I hear you cry? A most astute question, and one which I shall be only too happy to answer. But first, if I may direct your gaze to your left. Beyond those majestic gates, you will find Chocobo Square, home to the Chocobo Racing Circuit. Ay, what Chocobo owner has not dreamed of pitting their fleetest bird against the realm's finest in a pulse-quickening dash for fame and fortune? Truly, it is the sport of sultans. And, it should, and should you desire a more elaborate contest of strategy, you will surely find it in Minion Square at the Lord of Verminion Tables, where would-be generals pit armies of minions against one another in battles for honor and glory. Now, where were we? Ah, uh, yes, Mandeville Gold Saucer Points. Put simply, MGP, as we call it for short, is the currency by which dreams are bought and sold within these halls. But my associate here beyond, beside me can tell you more, including how to go about acquiring some MGP of your very own. Pray speak to him uh, to continue your tour. So you're about to experience the wonders of the Gold Saucer for the first time? 
How I envy you. Uh, but before you venture forth, you will want to exchange a share of your guild for MGP, a service which it is my greatest honor to, my great honor to provide. With MGP in your co coin purse, you'll be able to enjoy all of the fabulous attractions we have to offer, and all of the wonderful games. If you play them with skill, you'll find you, your little stack of points increasing 10, 20, even 100 fold. Now that you know the fundamentals, you're ready to step out onto the floor of the Gold Saucer. Your tour will continue at Card Square to the southwest. The card trader there will be your guide. I would of course be happy to exchange some of your gill for MGP before you venture on. While my associates and I strive to learn nothing unexplained, leave nothing unexplained, there truly is no substitute for first-hand experience, and I heartily recommend trying your hand at our many amusements for yourself. Alright, let's go ahead and get a little bit of MGP from him. Welcome to the Gold Saucer. If you're looking to exchange your ordinary old skill for shiny new MGP, then you've come to the right place. What do you say? So, one... MGP is 10 gil. And... Some of the attractions are at least 10 MGP, and sometimes you can win quite a bit from them. We'll go ahead and get 100. That's not that bad. And then we got quest right here, and we gotta go talk to the other person over there. Welcome, welcome, fair traveler. Care to test your luck with a mini cock pot ticket? Yes, sure. Splendid, miss. Now allow me to explain. Mini cock pot is a game of chance available to you thrice every day. Playing is simplicity itself, just guess the value of the covered numbers to win it big. If Nymia's Grace is with you, you'll be rewarded with Manderville Gold Saucer Points Galore. So, miss, do you feel lucky? You can now purchase up to three mini Kekpot tickets per day. The counter for mini Kekpot tickets reset, resets daily at 10 a.m. Earth time. Each mini Kekpot ticket has nine slots arranged in a 3x3 three three grid. Each slot is randomly assigned a number from 1 to 9. When you purchase a ticket, a single number will be revealed. Play, uncover any three num other numbers. Based on that information, guess the sum of each line. Finally, select a single line. The payout of MGP will depend upon the total sum of the line you have chosen. And we get a voucher for 100 mandible gold saucer points. Thank you very much. Alright, let's get a... So it's 10 MGP to get the first one. Okay, so three, that's a six, let's do this one, and we'll go ahead and uncover that full line. Once you've selected a line, all the numbers are uncovered with some of the three line in line you chose determining your MGP payout. It's that easy. So that's 11, 18, is 119 MGP. And since we know that one's going to give us at least more than what we paid, although I think every reward is more than what we pay now, so we'll take that. And we got an achievement. And I always like to kind of look to see what... So that one would have been more, 252. And that's the only one that was more than what we earned, so that's pretty good. Thank you for your patronage. Would you like to play again? It's another 10 MGP. So we got a 1, that's a 5, 8, let's go ahead and do that one. Let's see. So that's 20, 306, which isn't too bad. 252. Oh, that one was the 1,800. That straight down right there. Oh well. Thank you for your patronage. Would you like to play again? Um, let's see. Middle is three. Let's 
Let's try this middle one here. Oh, we got the 10,000. Yay! So yeah, uh, the only one that adds up to 10,000 is one, two, and three in a line. Because the, the sum that you need is six. So anytime I see a one, two, or three revealed, I'm like trying to click all the options for getting a straight line. Um, yeah, earning that uh, 10,000 definitely gave us a couple achievements right there. We have a winner! Please accept my congratulations and your prize of 10,000 MGP. And remember, there's always more to be won on the morrow. Alright, that's it for that. Um, and we also had that... Where is it at? He gave us that... This, and we can just use that for 100... There was any other MGP stuff here? All right, let's go talk to that person over here. There's another quest that way that we can pick up in a minute. Then the triple triad quest. you just the sweetest thing. Welcome to Cardsware, home of the Triple Triad Tables. What's the Triple Triad, you ask? Why, only the mind-bending, pulse-pounding, maddeningly Moorish card game that's taken the realm by storm. But don't take my word for it. Behold. Can you not feel the tension in the air? Form a, from, form a hand of five cards and play the role of a field general sending your bravest to battle. Should you wish to learn the rules and experience the excitement for yourself, you need only ask. Start today, and we'll even throw in some complimentary cards to help you on your way. You can face off against a single opponent at any time, or, if you crave an even greater test of skills, take part in one of our regular tourneys. And believe me when I tell you there's no feeling quite like standing triumphant on the battlefield after vanquishing all comers. You really should try it. A minute to learn, a lifetime to master. That's Triple Triad. Ah, uh, but I'm getting carried away. You have a tour to finish. Wonder Square is your next destination. Not that there's any hurry, of course. If you'd like to play a hand or two before you go, you'd need to stay, say the word. Triple Triad is taking Eorzea by storm. Care to try your hand at this entrancing new card game? Sure. And so another challenger is born. Welcome to the world of Triple Triad, where you pit your cards against an opponent's in a tense battle of skill, strategy, and the odd dose of luck. Here at the Mandible Gold Saucer, I am pleased to present all new players with the cards they need to get started. To play a match, however, first you'll need to build a deck composed of five cards from your registered card list. Oh, and I suggest speaking with the nearby Triple Triad trader should you wish to expand your card collection. You are now able to challenge opponents to Triple Triad matches. New cards can be obtained from a number of sources, including the Triple Triad Trader, victory spoils from winning matches, and prizes from Triple Triad tournaments. Play against the Triple Triad Master to learn the basic rules of the game. Before you can begin, however, there are several steps that must be completed. First, you must use the cards in your inventory to register them to your card list. Your card list can be viewed at the Gold Saucer options found under Character in the main menu. Next, access your card decks, also located within the Gold Saucer options, and build a deck by selecting five cards from those you have registered. Speak with the Triple Triad Master once your deck is ready, and she will engage you in a tutorial match. You get the Dodo card, Sabotender card, Bomb card, Mandragor card, and Kuro card, and they're all one star. So, we're going to go to inventory and find where she put those. There they are. And just use these real quick. And then go to Gold Saucer, Card Deck, and we're just going to hit Recommended, and it'll put them all in there for us.
ready for a match, are you? Wonderful. I'm afraid I must detect, deduct a number of MGPs per triple tried regulations. But rest assured that victory shall win you back those points and more. Now, it is my distinct pleasure to introduce you to the game that is sweeping the realm. You will now be invited to a triple triad match. Select challenge to begin the game. And we select our deck. So the special rules for this one is all open, meaning I can see their cards. Triple triad is placed by placing a card on the table, which I did not get to finish reading because I'm slow. See how my card changed color? This means you have tapped for the card. During your turn, even if you play a card with a smaller number, it will not result in that card being captured. Try to capture and control more cards than your opponent. The match will end when all spaces are grid. Have, have you tested your tactics with more than one? And some of you have won your A leap of faith is now underway. We'll get to that later. I'm gonna put this one here. Done. Now that you have an understanding of the rules, it's time for you to go forth and seek out many triple triad players found here in the Gold Saucer and the world beyond. This game has gained an avid following, and you're sure to find willing participants in various locales across Eorzea. In addition to challenging your fellow adventurers, you can also play triple triad matches against NPCs who are marked. Were marked with a special card-shaped icon above their display name. Simply speak with the NPC and select challenge to begin a match. And yeah. So these um, icons that you see that are like diagonal exclamation marks and stuff, those are all triple triad. And it means that the ones that have the exclamation mark mean you haven't fought them yet. And when they've got the star on them, it means they still have a card that they dropped that you haven't received yet. Um, but we'll, we'll get into that later. I don't know if I'll be able to get there fast enough. It's over here. There's eight minutes remaining. We might as well try it. Um, but it is a gate, which is, um, kind of like fates out in the world, except instead of you fighting things, you got little, uh, instead of you fighting things, You've got little um, challenges that you have to complete, like jumping up to this correct place or whatever. I haven't done this one yet. To think, think what you have, what it takes to hop, skip, and jump your way to victory, then step right up and try your luck at the leap of faith. And if you're feeling especially daring, we've placed several trophies throughout the course. Reach them before you clear the finish line, and your reward will be that much greater. When participating as a party, please note all party members must be present in the gold sauce before speaking with the sabre tender. I'm gonna try it. This one actually cues you up for something. Yeah, I haven't done this one yet. I've only done the ones that are like, they actively happen within the gold saucer itself. Ooh. Oh, okay, you just stand on it. That's cool. This is narrow. <gasps> okay, I thought I fell off for a second there. jump into from here. Oh. 
Oh, I almost fell off. That was scary. Oh. Where's the next little... This is so narrow. No wonder that one over there was like a three star that I can see. It's really hard to get to because it's so narrow over there. I'm gonna try one more time and then I'm gonna get up to the top. Nope. Guess that's not gonna happen. <laughs> try again uh, sometime when I've got a longer time allotment. I'll do one more try since I've still got five minutes and it's not hard to get up here. So high up. I got it. Okay. Exciting. All right. Ooh. We got total 3,900 MGP. The, the gold one was 500. The silver was 300. I got three of those and five of the bronze pack bars. I don't think I missed any. It's possible I just can't see some. But I think I got everything. 
there might be one over there that I'm missing, but nah, I think I got everything. Oh, there's a bronze one way down there that I missed that I can see. I think that was the only one. Cool. I liked that. I liked that a lot. That was neat. <laughs> that was cool. <laughs> I'm really glad I did that. <laughs> okay, we got that one. Alright, now let's go back to doing those quests. Um, and uh, attuning to all these easter eggs. I'm not sure if I attuned the one in here, so I'm gonna run in there. And we're also gonna grab this. Luina is frustrated with the new challenge and needs to unburden herself. I dress precisely as I was told to receive such a dreadful score, not to mention the humiliating criticism. <laughs> oh, this is the beauty one. Hmm? You wish to know what's bothering me? That is well, for I wish to unburden myself. I've been having a frustrating time with the fashion report, the challenge they recently introduced. Yes, I, who can play any game here blindfolded and spun around, struggle with it. To be fair with myself, though, it has a subjective element. If you have a mind for fashion, perhaps you would like to try your hand at the challenge. Go to Wonder Square and seek out Masked Rose. But be warned, the barbs on that man's tongue have barbs on their tongues. I will not be able to actually participate that in that until I get a lot higher level because um, when I tried it on my main character um, you basically had to have like all crafters leveled up to max to be anywhere close to successful at it and I don't know it, they might have changed it since then I haven't tried again um, it just was a little bit too much <laughs> for me to really keep up with. Alright, we're going to talk to this gatekeeper. You look lost, honey. Why don't I show you around? It'll be nice to talk to a woman for a change. Feast your eyes on Wonder Square. From gripping games to an awe-inspiring attractions to the finest and fine dining and the freshest of refreshments, there's no end to the wonders housed within these halls. And let's not forget the most wondrous of them all, El Colosso, as we lovingly call our mammoth cactuar mascot. It's the star of some of our most popular events. Suffice to say, you won't want to miss them. Now, I know what you're thinking. With everything going on at the Gold Saucer, how can I ever hope to keep up? But you needn't worry. My fellow gatekeepers and I will always be on hand to see what you don't that you don't miss a thing. For the continuation of your tour, I've been instructed to direct you into the waiting arms of my colleague Villa De at the Cactpot board. She's one of our most popular girls, and once you meet her, I'm sure you'll understand why. Well, ta-ta for now. Okay. There's a deep right over this way. Oh, it's up. These things shoot you up <laughs> to the next level, which is kind of neat. Okay, got that. Person we gotta talk to is on the other side. A new challenger has come to put her stylistic sensibilities to the test. Welcome to the fashion report, good Minahem. 
Is everything quite all right? I haven't actually met him yet on this character, but this is Red Rose. He's uh, the Weaver Guild leader guy. Uh, excellent! Full glad am I to hear it. Now then, I believe this is your first time participating in the Fashion Report. Allow me to explain the concept and, and the rules. Fashion is a form of self-expression. What we wear without is a reflection of who we are within. But be it a conscious effort or no, the choice brings our individuality to the fore. Some folk are drawn to vibrant colors, others may favor a loose fit for, for comfort, and while it is well and good to dress to one's preferences, a man cannot prefer that which he does not know. The world of fashion is vast and at times daunting, but if we have the courage to take a step into the unknown, we may discover wonderful ways, uh, wonderful new ways of self-expression we had never considered. And tis for no other reason than to encourage folk to take that first step that I created this challenge, the fashion report. The rules are simple. I shall assign you a theme based upon which you are to attire yourself to the best of your sensibilities. I shall then judge you and award you a score. Participating is free, and there is a host of fabulous prizes to be won, courtesy of Manderville and Manderville. If you wish to know the finer points of the game, my lovely assistant Kasumi shall attend you. I look forward to giving you my unadulterated, brutally honest evaluation of your fashion sense. Steal yourself and let me know when you are ready to undertake the challenge. That gave us regular experience, which is nice. <laughs> fashion report is now available. Speak with Mask Rose and the Gold Saucer to undertake a fashion challenge. No, I'm not going to bother with that right now. I don't have anything that could work for it. I'm going to go down this path here. I think in this room all the etherites are up as well. So we're gonna use this one right here. Talk to Belita. Ah, there you are, my darling. I've been waiting for you. I'm Belita, and I'd like to personally welcome you to Event Square. The most spacious of all areas of the Gold Saucer, Event Square is a veritable cornucopia of pleasure and delight. Get doubtless the sizable siege in the, or stage in the middle of the square has caught your eye. This is the scene of some of our most sensational attractions, so don't be shy about taking center stage. And after the curtain has fallen, why not try changing your life forever? At the Jumbo Cackpot, all you need is a handful of MGP and a head full of dreams. Just choose four numbers and cast your hopes to the heavens. You never know just when Nymea will smile down upon you. Now, as much as I've enjoyed getting to know you, I'm afraid it's time for us to part. The next and final leg of your tour takes you to Round Square. Don't think too hard about the name, my darling. Even I'm not sure it's supposed to make sense. <laughs> Welcome to the Jumbo Cackpot, where Aorzia of your dreams is only four digits away. Can I tempt you with a ticket, miss? Sure. Excellent. Let me enlighten you as to how it all works. First, you purchase a Jumbo ticket, Jumbo Cackpot ticket from me. You then pick your four lucky numbers, any from zero to nine that tickle your fancy, and inscribe them upon your ticket. After that, simply wait till we announce the winning number to see if you have any matches. Check your digits from last to first. The more matches you have, the more Mandible Gold Saucer points you'll win. If all your numbers match, then ding ding ding, you've hit the cackpot. You'll receive an embarrassingly large number of MGP and an extravagant prize besides. And with the Jumbo Cackpot, the more, particip the more participants there are, the ga grander the prizes become. Just imagine how many MGP you'll stand to win if all your friends and allies join in the fun. When the time comes to draw the winning number, look no further than the lovely Cackpot Cashier. She will provide you with everything from first prize to consolation points. 
Last but not least, I will be here to assist you day or night if you ever are ever at a loss. You can now purchase Jumbo Crackpot tickets. The winning number for this lottery will be drawn every Saturday at 9 p.m. Earth Time. After the drawing, you will have until the following Saturday at 9 p.m. Earth Time to claim your prize. Once this one week period ends, please be aware that you will be unable to claim any prizes from the previous drawing. And we've got a thing. It's another MGP voucher. And we can go ahead and buy one. Uh, cliffhanger, so we can go do that in just a second. Can I interest you in a ticket to fame and fortune? Um, now all that's left is to select a four digit number. The winning number will be selected at a later date. If the last digit of your number matches the winning number, you win the fourth prize. If the last two match, you win third prize. If the last three match, you win second. And if all four numbers match, you take home the grand prize. I'm just going to do a random number. That is 100 MGP. Uh, we can buy a second ticket for 100 MGP, 150 MGP. We'll do another random number. Oh. Now all that's left is to select a four-digit number. The winning number will be select. Oh, they said the same thing. I'm just making sure it was different than the other one. And then the last one is 200 MGP. Check that again later. Oh, I'm stuck. I'm gonna tune to this really quick before I run down to the... There should be a gatekeeper. If you talk to one of those, they usually will let you teleport to, or they'll teleport you to where the current gate is. I'm not seeing them. Where are they at? There they are. If you wish to participate in Cliffhanger, pray make haste to Wonder Square East. This one's kind of a jumping one. Well, my baby bootkins! Will someone, someone save my baby bootkins from, from those terrible hobgoblins? Ma said to stay away from the big statue, but Babookins is at the top, and if, if, and if I and if I don't save her, who will? That was hard to say. <laughs> so this one, there's bombs that will explode if you're standing next to them, and they'll knock you off of whatever you're standing on. So you have to kind of move quickly. It's a fat chocobo hatchling. Look at that thing. And we got 2,000 for completing it. Yay! Okay, now I can get back to what we were doing. There is an etherite there. I think, yeah, we already attuned to that one. Let's see. Round square. I'm pretty sure we got both of those. Let me see. Top. 
this gatekeeper. Are you the first time visitor? I was told to expect a thousand welcomes to the gold saucer and a thousand welcomes to round square. How can a square be round, you ask? I'm not sure I understand the question. Moving on to more important matters, is that lofty peak not a sight to behold? That is Mount Coral, the main attraction here at Round Square. One of our most thrilling events pits our customers against each other in a challenge to see who can most swiftly scale its heights. I tell you, the view from the summit is a sight to behold. And that concludes your tour of the Gold Saucer. While I'm sure you're eager to start enjoying yourself, pray do not forget to return to the main counter and claim your complimentary gift. Okay. Um, looks like we already attuned to this one? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if we got event square. Let's check. Did we get, we did not get event square, so we're gonna head over there real quick. It was hiding in the corner, so I couldn't see it earlier. Pretty sure we got the cactus board because we were just up there. We got Wonder Square West and East. Cactus board, round square, entrance and card squares, and Ethrex Plaza. Okay, the only one we're still missing is the one by the Chocobos. So we're going to go to entrance and card squares because the lift to get up to the Chocobo racing area is right there. Beyond this door lie Chocobo Square and Minion Square, homes to the heart-pounding, hair-raising spectacles that are Chocobo Racing and Lord of Verminion. For those with a need for speed and a yearning for competition, the Mandeville Gold Saucer provides the perfect solution. Are you content to merely amble through life, shuffling forward step by step at a snail's pace? Imagine the wind in your hair as you cross the finish line atop a, atop a chocobo, the thrill of competition and the joy of triumph. Would that not be a far, far greater? Ah, but that you are here bespeaks desire already present, present does it not? Aye, I think this eve a new jockey we do receive. Alas, a jockey cannot compete without a suitable steed, a race chocobo to be precise. May have you think to nominate your own personal chocobo? If so, strike the thought from your mind at once, for only a chocobo's trained for the task will suffice. But fear not, my friend, for it so happens we have a surplus of fledglings in need of new companions. In fact, to any who wish to don the mantle of chocobo jockey, the mandible gold saucer will generously gift a race chocobo. You need only journey to Moogle's gift mounts in Bent Branch Meadows, where fledgling race chocobos receive their initial training. Make your intentions known to the trainer named Kattering, and she will see you matched with a suitable steed. Okay, we'll do that probably in another episode. Just because it's some back and forth. Um, and then we're going to head over here and get this last etherite and do... I'm pretty sure there's going to be a little quest. Maybe not. I don't see one. You have attuned yourself to all the etherite shards in the Manderville Gold Saucer. Yeah, there's not a quest on this one. Um, so this is the one where you battle your minions together, but we're gonna do that later. I'm not very good at it. It's kind of clunky and hard to do on... 
PS4. Use the lift operator, go right back down. Welcome back, honored guest. I trust you have come away from the tour with a greater appreciation of all the gold saucer has to offer. As a token of our appreciation for your patronage, it is my great pleasure to offer you a complimentary gift from the personal vaults of our esteemed proprietor. Well, knock me down with a chocobo's tail feather. Is that a new customer I see? Ha ha! I could hardly have picked a better time to drop in for an impromptu inspection. Inspection. Hello. Master Roland! Yes, this lady here is, but has but this moment completed her introductory tour. Is that so? Well, then allow me to personally welcome you to the Gold Saucer. I am Roland, God, good madam, and fellow entrusted, and uh, the fellow entrusted with overseeing the daily affairs of this fine establishment on our behalf of our esteemed proprietor, a great man if there ever was one. You are an adventurer, yes? I, your dress and bearing told me as such. I dare say, then, that on your travels you have seen firsthand the difficulties which yet plague our nation. Witness the struggles of Alamigos' displaced masses and those who and those whose homes were consumed in the fires of the calamity. The Sultanate is not unsympathetic to their plight, of course, yet how can one begin to provide succor with, to such countless uh, multitudes? One man had an answer. Godbert Manderville has a, had a dream, a dream of a house of untold wonders that would provide stable employment and lodgings to be displaced, mirth and merriment to the disconsolate, discon, dis, disconsolate, I'm not sure how to say that. And pro pro prosperity and plenty to the Sultanate at large. To many of our patrons, the Gold Saucer is merely Aorzea's foremost entertainment venue, a place to forget about their cares for the day. To me, it is one of the founding stones upon which our realm will be rebuilt, a miracle wrought by the hand of the greatest man I have ever known. Something tells me you understand that which I have told you, that you perchance share a similar dream, but I shall keep you no longer. The Gold Saucer is and all its wonders await you, friend. Pray enjoy them to your heart's content. Till we meet again, may the spinner's pool be ever kind. And we get some more free play stuff for the free things. For the really cheap stuff. Yeah. Alright, so that is the gold saucer. Pretty exciting, right? <laughs> um... So yeah, uh, like I said, we'll finish the Chocobo one and maybe run a thing of the um, minion battle uh, in another video. I don't think I'm going to do it right now. I'm already kind of over the hour as it is. <laughs> we'll do that either next time or a couple episodes. I'll just keep the qu keep the quest for now. So anyway. I hope you guys enjoyed that. A little bit of fun side uh, adventuring to do. Um, anyway, so in the next episode, we'll probably uh, hop right back into the story and keep going with that. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it and see you next time. Thank you, everybody.